expense for year one, it also equals the depreciation expense for year two. So those two added up would be the accumulated depreciation prior to the accumulated depreciation or the depreciation expense calculated in year three, meaning we can also see it in this table as well. It's the uh, 193, uh, 125. So then we have that information and we're going to then subtract that out. That gives us the book value prior to this. So the book value prior to the current period is going to equal the cost less the accumulated depreciation prior to this period. And once again, it's the same number that we calculated up here, but uh, you just want to make sure that you, you have something set up where you're calculating this number out. Then we're going to multiply that times the double declining rate. And the double declining rate is still this 50%. So we're going to multiply it times 50%. And so there we have this. And once again, I could underline here. We're going to multiply it times 50%. So now we're looking at these two numbers here, this and this. And that will give us the depreciation for year three. So I'm going to put my cursor here and do this calculation. This equals the book value before this time period times the double declining rate gives us the depreciation for year three. If we look at there, our little worksheet up here, then we are currently on work three, uh, year three. Depreciation is going to be what we just calculated. But they could also ask, what is the accumulated depreciation or the book value? And in order to do that, we're going to take the cost. The cost will be the same. So the cost will be equal to this 257.5, like so. And that'll give us the 257.5. That does not change. The accumulated depreciation would then be calculated as the prior year's accumulated depreciation plus the current year's depreciation expense. Or you can think of it as all three years so far. In this case, depreciation expense, we add them up. It comes out to 225. 313. Uh, then how do we calculate the book value? It equals the 257.5 less minus the 225, 313. And that gives us our current book value. If we look at that in context of a journal entry and our accounts, remember we're on year three now. We have our book value before this transaction. All of our prior year, year two, has been closed out to year three equity account. And therefore, we're saying that we earned this another 100000 this year. It's just the exact same of our earnings as the prior year. And we have not yet recorded the depreciation. And therefore, if we do that, then the depreciation in year three, now they have to just, we've calculated the number to be this 32188 So there we have the depreciation expense. Notice the decline in depreciation expense over the year. That's why it's a, it's a front-loaded method, an accelerated method. And that brings the net income from 100 minus the 32,188 to the 63,813. Then we're going to credit the accumulated depreciation. And that brings the accumulated depreciation, the contra asset account, the asset with a credit bounce up, and the net income down for the 257,5 less to 225,313 to 32,188, which is what is on our worksheet over here. All right, let's do this one more time. Now, year four has a bit of a twist to it, and this is often very comp very confusing to a lot of people. And the problem is that the accumulated depreciation method is not perfect in its math. It front loads the uh, depreciation expense, and whatever the final year is, which happens to be year four in this case, basically just needs to be plugged and, rather than us doing the calculation as we have done in the past. So I'm going to do it the wrong way first to show you what we have done and the logical next step that you would think that we would do for year four. So you can see the uh, the imperfection in the math, then do what we need to do in order to plug the number uh, in terms of what we want it to be. So you would think that the calculation in year four would be the book value. I'm going to do this in, a, in kind of a short invest method. It's going to be the book value from the prior year. So it's, it would be the cost less the accumulated depreciation, giving us the book value. We've already, already calculated that, though. So I'm going to say that equals the book value up here, the 32,188. And then we would multiply that times the double declining rate, which we know is 50%. And I'm going to make, notice it came out to 1 because I haven't changed the cell to be in the terms of a percentage. There's the 50%. And if we multiply that out, then that would equal, we would think, the depreciation for year four. 
So let's do that. I'm going to say this equals the 32, uh, 188 times the 50% and enter. And then I'm going to plug that into our numbers up here and uh, see what happens in terms of our worksheet. We would think that the depreciation for year four then under this method should be the 1694. And if we calculate the book value, then the cost is the same. The accumulated depreciation equals the prior year accumulated depreciation plus the current year expense. Or if we highlight all four, then we got the 241,416. The book value then is 257,5 less the accumulated depreciation. And that gives us the 1694. Now there's something wrong with this. And I'll give you just a second to try to think about there's this, what is wrong with that 16094? Uh, it's not as obvious it, if, as it might be if we had no salvage value. Um, but the, but if we think about it, the salvage value is, is the problem here. We remember that we said that we think we can scrap this piece of equipment for 20,000. And therefore we have, we do not want to take the book value below the, the amount we believe we can get if we scrap it being 20,000. So what happened here is this depreciation took us to uh, amount below the salvage value. Now this, again, it would be a lot more apparent if we didn't have a salvage value, if we just thought that the equipment would be worth nothing at the end, because this number would then be negative, which makes absolutely no sense. It doesn't make us any sense to say we have a forklift on the books, which is worth negative 10,000. That doesn't make any sense. All we're trying to do is allocate the cost. If we say that the, the floor is the salvage, meaning we want to bring it down to the salvage, then we have to stop at the 20. And this method, because it's double declining, is not perfect, meaning the math just doesn't work perfectly. And that's okay because it's just an estimate anyways. And uh, we don't need to be perfect. It's just an estimate. So we are going to just plug in the final year. So it does kind of what we want it to do. We just plug the final year. So then we got to think about, okay, well, I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to go back down here. I'm going to do it the way we have to do it any final year. If it's a seven year property, it's going to be happening in, in basically year seven that we'll have to do this kind of plug calculation. Here's one way we can think of it. We're going to start off with the cost again, which is 257.5. And then I'm going to say less the salvage value. And the salvage value, remember, from the problem was this 20,000. So this is where the salvage value comes into play, 20,000. And now, of course, I've made it a percentage. So I'm going to go back to the Home tab, the Numbers group. And I'm well, actually, I'll just go to this tab. I'll Format Paint it. And I'm going to turn it back into a uh, number format and 20,000. Be careful of the cells formatting, of course, anytime you work with these. And that's going to be the amount to be depreciated. So I'm going to take this calculation. It's going to equal the 257.5 less minus the 20,000. And we get the uh, 237.5. Why are we doing this? Because basically, if I want 20,000 left, that's what we want to be left with. Then over the useful life of four years, we will have to depreciate 237.5. Why? Because the cost 257.5 less the 237.5 equals the 20,000. So over the useful life, this is what we want to depreciate. Now, if we subtract out the depreciation for all prior periods, as of this point, we had year one depreciation of 128.750 plus years two's 63, 3, 4, 75 plus year three, 32, 188. That's the accumulated depreciation as of this time period. Once again, we also calculated it in this format here, meaning prior year's accumulated depreciation plus the current year. And that means that's what we've done so far. So I'm going to put some underlines here. We'll say this will be an underline here. And then we're going to do the underline here. And that will give us the, the depreciation for year four that we need in order to leave us with the salvage of 20,000, hopefully. And we'll, so we'll double check that. So this equals the uh, what we want to depreciate over the useful life less what we've done so far prior to year four. And that gives us the 12. I'm going to put an underline under here. And we'll double that here. And now let's go back up and see if this does what we want it to do. Well, what do we want it to do? Leave us with a with a book value equal to the salvage of 12, 20,000. 
All right, so let's do that. We're going to say in year four, the depreciation we calculated to be now the 12, uh, 188. We know that if we calculate the book value, then that's the cost less the accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is the prior year's accumulated depreciation plus the current year's expense or just highlights all four years of depreciation if we add up the depreciation 237.5. Then uh, if we subtract this out, it equals the cost less the accumulated depreciation. It's going to equal, what's it going to equal? Hopefully 20,000 and it does. So now we're left off with that 20,000. What's going to happen in year five? absolutely nothing. We're not going to depreciate anymore. But what if we're still using the equipment? Still not going to depreciate it because we're not going to depreciate it below what we believe we could scrap it for. And uh, if, it's, if it's a significant amount, we may have to adjust the estimate and say, well, the estimate was wrong and re re adjust it. What we will not do is depreciate it below the salvage generally or below zero, of, of course. Uh, we weren't, we're not going to have a negative value of an equipment. We'll now record the depreciation expense. Our normal journal entry is going to be down here. So once again, the depreciation expense for the current year is going to be this 12188 And once we hit enter, it'll record this amount here and it'll bring net income down like so. And note the trend here. Note that what is happening to our depreciation expense, it went, it was way higher in year one, it goes down in year two, down in year three, down in year four. That's the idea of an accelerated method. And note what that does to net income if all else is equal, meaning if we say that we are only factors are going to be that we have the same revenue each year of 100000 and the only factor being depreciation, and look at that factor, then we're going to say that that created actually a loss in year one. It created income in year two, and income increased in year three, and an income increased in year four. If we looked at the straight line method and we said that the depreciation expense is the only factor, then it resulted in a same net income over the time period. And it's up to you to decide whether that's appropriate or not, because the question is, did we really get more value out of the depreciation of the equipment in year one than in year two? Was it more productive for us in year one than in year four? So if we record the credit then, what's gonna happen when we hit enter, uh, this amount will go up, bring in the book value down, we're back in balance here. If we still have the, the equipment purchased for this amount, less the accumulated depreciation, leaving us with the salvage being the 20000 What's going to happen next year in year five? We're not going to record anything because we have depreciated it down to the salvage value.